What's up, everybody? Welcome back to a Six Man Blitz episode. Got a great episode for you guys today. NFL content, uh, Chicago Bears. We're going to you know, predict some record predictions for some teams in the NFC North with the Bears. Uh, we're going to talk some NBA talk. But let's talk. Let's start with Michael Malone. Stupid ass questions. <laughs> He's a fucking sore loser, bro. And the it, like in the press conferences, a reporter was like, "Hey, so how did it feel to absorb uh, this loss after being up twenty points?" And you know, he was like, "You know, it fucking sucks. Season's over." Uh, stupid ass questions. Next question. All these remarks. But when it comes to against the Lakers. He was like, "Yeah, who's the Lakers' daddy?" He was, he was uh, talking his shit when it came to beating the Lakers and stuff. But now I got that, got his ass bounced, Cancun. He a little mad. What's your thoughts on that? I think, uh, shoot, he got what was coming for him. Everybody over scrutinized his uh, excuses he made, talking yeah. about the long season. The guys were burnt out. They were exhausted. <laughs> we didn't have the opportunity to rest like we did last year. Every every year has a different challenge that you got to overcome. So yeah, yeah, they last year what didn't line up like this year, but they were still a well oiled machine. They mm-hmm. still had their five starters back. He just choked, couldn't couldn't get things going. So, yeah, there's no excuse, bro. You you was up twenty. Like we don't want to hear shit about the season. <laughs> Largest game seven comeback like victory in. Game seven history and NBA history. That's insane. And you look at what they were able to do defensively. Like Jokic, you guys had to match Murray, that yeah. defensively if yeah. you if you wanted to win. They low key, um, as soon as Minnesota saw they could, you know, get get under their skin and dominate them defensively, Denver just gave up. Essentially, I mean, every I mean, Jokic and Murray were putting up hella shots, but it didn't matter. Uh, but we got a lot of, lot to get into, like I said, NBA talk, NFL talk, got a great show for you guys today. You ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Now let's start with the game seven matchups. There were some great game sevens low key. I mean, the Knicks Pacers, that one was kind of cheeks because the Knicks, yeah, it was. the Knicks injuries really caught up to them. Uh, but let's start off with game seven, Minnesota, uh, versus Denver. What were some of your takeaways from this game seven? Man, and I the thought it was over, whole. honestly. I yeah, was, me too. I was damn near tuned out. Uh, even when they were making those runs in the late third. And then you see what happens. Completely different game in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. I mean, going leading into the fourth. Uh, defensively, Minnesota was stifling. Mm-hmm. Everybody Nobody was coming was after Nobody was making a shot that wasn't Jokic at that point. Yeah. Murray, I, I mean. They pretty much locked everybody down. Murray had like 29 in the first half. And Anthony Edwards started guarding him in the second half, took that matchup. And he had six points the rest of the game. Shot 20% from the field when Anthony Edwards was guarding him. So that, that, that was fucking crazy. Insane. So when you were able to shut a nigga water off like that... <laughs> It's, we can speak from experience on that matter. <laughs> only a matter of time. So they just had they had just enough time, and even at the end, it was such a dominating performance by Minnesota. Once they made the comeback, like they Yoke, Jokic was trying to do Jokic things towards the end, mm. and it was it was falling short. Big threes, two for ten from the three, and yeah. I think a big thing was they were the, the offense got stagnant. There was no movement. You look at Jokic trying to do what he's done, like you know what you're saying. Uh, but Michael Porter Jr. is not knocking down shots. Um, Aaron Gordon gave you four points. They said he had more fouls than points. <laughs> uh, so the other guys, Reggie Jackson, Bobby Schmurda, none of the role players for the Nuggets showed up in this one. Um, I mean, the Nuggets had 69 points combined with um, Jokic and Murray, but they put no, they put up yeah 69 points, but it took them 55 shots, both of them. Damn. So the the shooting was bad from those two. The points, you look at the box score. If you're a box score watcher, you're like Murray and Jokic had a good game. <laughs> nah, the, the the shots weren't falling down, and Minnesota was capitalizing off that on the other end. So it was great. Like all series, we seen Minnesota put up some defensive master classes, bro, Man. performances. Like, some of the best performances we've seen in NBA playoff history. Man. Just how they were just so stifling. Um, and Anthony Edwards not having the best game, but the leadership was there. The leadership Defensively was there. Was there. Um, what was one thing that surprised you in this game, though? I think um, Minnesota's <laughs> defensive 
adjustments mm -hmm. really impressed me um, throughout the entire series, but really uh, the last couple games because they realized Rudy, albeit he's the all defensive player of the year multiple times at this point, could not guard Jokic one on one. It was barbecue chicken for a um, lot of games this series. <laughs> but when they pulled put him off of him and he was in that shot blocking rotation help defender role that's when he's at his best and yeah. you've seen what that was able to do uh for them defensively as well as you know ant clamping on the um mm -hmm. and completely just erasing my man's out <laughs> the game Murray. so although he was um not good impacted shit. offensively they were throwing double teams at him uh, pretty much the entire game he was struggling to get his shot going as a result um down the stretch he was clamps and really got a lot of his points, easy baskets from steals. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that that boy really looked like Jordan. And they got yeah. towers. They got three, three monsters essentially. And um, Nas Reed, he's a big ass point guard, bro. He's fantastic. Man. He's and like he's like what is he like six nine six ten? He's something Probably like six, that. 10. Yeah. yeah. But he was blocking Jokic's shots. Jokic couldn't do shit on Nas Reed. Right. That, that was surprising to me. Right. So Nas Reed, they had two guys that could go at yep. um, Jokic all game long. And Jokic had to play big minutes in this game. He was playing Josh tell. Hart minutes. <laughs> you could just tell that was weighing on him. Yeah. Especially towards the end. He couldn't even get off the floor when Nas beat his shit. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> So they, you know that photo of him just standing and watching the game, game mm -hmm. six. They were saying, "Motherfuckers be faking demons and shit. <laughs> Motherfuckers be faking fighting demons and shit." Yeah. But nah, so this was a great series. Minnesota yeah. showed up. Um, I think was was this to you the NBA Finals? I think Denver versus Minnesota was the best series we might see all the playoffs or no? Or Dallas and Minnesota, you think will compete with that? Uh, I think Boston would compete with that okay. um, just because they're coming from the East mm -hmm. and they've been the best team in basketball this year from the start. Um, <clears throat> the biggest question is going to be poor Zingy. Yeah. He's going to miss the first two games against the Pacers for sure. Uh, he'll probably come back towards the end of this series. And how healthy will he be? You've seen what An Ananobi look like. <laughs> Trying to rush back. That shit was terrible. Play four minutes. You could go? Come Niggas on. be killing me, bro. Like, you know if a guy can go or not. They you said know he, he was, could not go. They like, said he was off of tranquilizers and shit. <laughs> <laughs> it gave him a couple. Why, why even? I get it. It's game four, but then. A uh, game seven, but then. Yeah. And it, it's tough. Him and Josh Hart. Josh Hart shouldn't have played either. Um, But, you know, with uh, Boston matching up with maybe Minnesota. I think Minnesota or Dallas is going to beat Boston. It'll probably be a good series. I agree. But Porzingis, if he's playing, it'll be a good series. Uh, I just think the toughness is there with the West teams. You know, the Celtics, I don't think they have the toughness. And they didn't have to get through a tough playoff. The Pacers should challenge them, though. I think look the at Pacers the Celtics. I mean, look at what the Timberwolves had to go through. I mean, and you look at teams that the Celtics don't do well against. Miami. You know, Miami had their number, and the toughness from Miami is there. Jimmy Butler, um, you know, the level of, of attitude, the mentality, the mindset. Some of the Timberwolves guys have that same mindset. And I would say the Timberwolves got more star power than the Heat. So I think no uh, I think Minnesota would beat Boston. I think uh, Dallas would beat Boston as well, too. And but so Boston, it's gonna be like they'll they'll be get bounced in the the finals. They gotta make the finals at least though. Some people are saying the Pacers got a shot. I think they got a shot. I, I don't think it's gonna be a sweep, and I don't even think it's gonna be a gentleman sweep just because six of games. The I Celtics think Celtics woes offensively. Uh -huh. They look super stagnant, and I think the Pacers were a little bit overlooked just because of they didn't have Siakam the full year. Yeah. So once they added him, dude is he's nice. Not and he's only been he there nice, before. He's, he's an NBA champion. As fuck. NBA champion, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Defensive, uh, kick guard one through five. 
offensively shooting extremely high, high uh, mid range. Um, Bro, the Pacers, overall, the Pacers as a whole, first half uh, was uh, Easter Conference uh, semifinals game seven with the Knicks. Um, they shot 70 percent from the field right, as a whole, which right. is like unheard of. Unheard of. So it's really gonna come down to Halliburton. Is he gonna be that aggressor? Yeah, he needs to be yeah. all all series long. Because I know he talks a big game, but the dude is pass first. Yeah. Like, if you're going to be a killer, go kill somebody. Mm-hmm. And and he did that. So, hats off to him. Nick series. He but we got to see that every game for you to do. To, be to make some noise against the Celtics. What I think, though, the Celtics have a... I mean, the, the Pacers have a good opportunity is... Mm-hmm. No Porzingis. Mm-hmm. Al Horford is really the the only big he man. Trashed. So Miles Turner and Siakam, who will stop in those two? Yeah. Miles Turner has been pretty productive. I think like seventeen points a game in the playoffs. Uh, he could shoot the three. So yeah. him and Siakam, it's going to be Lock a tough shots. matchup against Boston. Um, Al Horford, he's an old man. He still can move, but mm-hmm. I like uh, the Pacers in that one. Uh, so I think Holly Burton, like you said, that's going to be a key factor. What can he do? But guys. Um, TJ McConnell, Obi Toppin, their their bench production has been they've been they've been really productive off the bench. No, they uh, have a great. Roster. They're deep as hell. Yeah. Um, I, um, I think they're just missing um, Benedict Matherin, and that's that's really it. he's he was a nice uh, player off the bench or starting. So they they're deep as shit. So I think they're gonna challenge Boston. I think six games though. Yeah, I'll, t- I'll I take wouldn't be six. surprised if the Pacers win. That's a lot of people's worst nightmares, is the Pacers in the finals. Pacers versus Minnesota. <laughs> oh, that'd be a trash. Yeah. And, and the Pacers, finals. though, they play at such a fast pace, so it's going to be really interesting. going to be Very. really fucking interesting. Um, but a little scat pack. <laughs> uh, so Dallas, though, versus Minnesota. What's your thoughts on this series? What you, who, who you got uh, taking this one? Man. It's gonna be seven games, I think. It might I think be. it's gonna be seven games because you look at <clears throat> the offensive creativity that the Mavs have. Yeah, they got two guys that are unguardable. Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck how good the defense is. I'm interested to see that matchup though. Yeah, I think it's just gonna come down to role players. Gafford and Lively, yeah. they played really well. They need Tim Hardaway to give you something because McDaniel's, uh, Nas Reed, like. The the Timberwolves have the better role players. They have guys way better. Mike Conley I'm taking, too. I'm taking their bigs over. They could the match Mavs up with Gafford, easily. the Gafford and easily. Lively. Oh, that PJ that Washington's gonna be huge in the series too. It's gonna be huge because he's he's got to hit those threes like he did last series mm-hmm. and extend the floor. Uh so so people can switch on get a switch on uh, Rudy and Cat. Against a Luca and a Kyrie, so they're not probably they're not going to do much switching, but um, that's really the goal there. But I think Minnesota's going to win in six. seven, six, six, six yeah, games. I say six or five. Luca is still banged up. Cat's going to be on. I mean, Ant's going to be on his ass like a thong. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what's the, what's doing name? Who? No party. Cardi, uh, Cardi, my Cardi. Cardi. No Cardi. <laughs> he did have a thong on. That shit was crazy. No Cardi. Uh, but, uh, no, it's going to be really interesting. I think this matchup is going to be fantastic. I think if like Kyrie can be as productive as he was in the Clippers series, mm-hmm. he was the best player in, in that series. Mm-hmm. Uh, if he, he gives you that and Luka is going to give you what he gives you, um, I think they have a really good shot. Um, or it's going to be six games if they do that. Um, just Five the role six. players. That's what really killed Denver in this series. Just them not having a Bruce Brown anymore. They had Bruce Brown when they won the championship. They missed that production. Uh, Michael Porter Jr., if he's not giving you what he was giving you in the Lakers series, he was 20 points a night that series. So if um, it's really going to come down to who has better role players and Nas Reed, if he's having the impact he's having. Um, even Nikhil Alexander-Walker, if he's doing some things, it's going to be tough for Dallas to, you know, Push the series seven games, but I, I like Minnesota. Uh, I, I'll say six, six games is good. Six games is a good prediction. I, yeah, I'd say six. Um, Lucas gonna be unreal, but he's still banged up. And Kyrie, like you said, he can't come out and be passive in the first half no. and try to take off in the second. Not Game against, not against Minnesota. Niggas gonna no. be sitting down on everybody around you. 
So passing the ball ain't gonna really do much. So yeah, you you would have Ant on Luca then, right? Yes. And then McDaniel's on Kyrie or. Uh, I think um. That's a good question. Either or, I mean, maybe Ant on Kyrie. Yeah, I think McDaniel's on Luca. Yeah, I really it really depends because who's uh their three? It's James Jones. I mean, jo- Jones, right? Who? Oh, Derek Jones. Derek yeah. Jones. So yeah, that that'd be tough because you don't you wouldn't put Conley on him, right? No, nah, you probably. could. You though. probably could, yeah. If you if you really wanted to, so yeah. I think you should honestly, yeah. or you put Luca on, or McDaniel's on Luca. Uh, Lucas, and then they they have Ant a good problem. Kyrie, they can they have a lot of good defenders, right? So, so I wouldn't even trip about it. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't trip about it. Putting what's his name on Mike Conley on. Uh, <clears throat> Who's that three? Jones? Yeah, Derek Jones. Derek he, was, Jones. he was cold for the Bulls. Yeah, he gonna he gonna have issues on the offensive boards. <laughs> they got the two twin towers, so they should be fine. Yeah, they should be getting every board. PJ Washington is no match to Cass. That's that's a matchup. Rudy Gobert would love is my <laughs> man. He not even he's just six ten. If he's two. doing them fadeaway jumpers, <laughs> give me give me the Minnesota. I mean, they they got PJ Washington, we got Jaden McDaniels. <laughs> um but Boston, Boston versus Pacers. Let's get back to that series. Who you got mm. in this one? Oh, Boston easily. You think easily six, seven games? I'm thinking I'd six. I say six. Yeah, you could say <clears throat> five or six. Okay, I, 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 I think Tyrese Halliburton, like we say, is gonna be a huge X factor in this one. Mm-hmm. Um, just the Pacers, though. Rick Carlisle, he's been, he's won a championship before. He's got pedigree as a coach, so I think it's really gonna come down to some of those matchups. If Siakam could go crazy and mm-hmm. go off, and Miles Turner could give you twenty a night, mm-hmm. I think they got a really good shot. I agree. McConnell, he, the minutes he gives you are huge, so it's just going to come down to those, you know, role players in, in, in all of the playoff matchups. How much can you get off the bench? What can the production be? Because Boston don't got no damn bench. Mm. I mean, Sam Hauser and Pritchard, they're decent, but um pacers should win that matchup the bench matchup so i think it's six games six games um let's talk a little about the knicks um tom thibodeau you think he's to, to blame for all the injuries they have they were hurt all regular season all regular season um oj and was hurt all regular season damn near um so i mean that's comes with the game you know injuries come with it uh which creates more work for those that are healthy which yeah. causes more injuries especially in the playoffs so you can't give him, uh, um, can't blame him solely for that, but he do be playing them. Up it like is a big, minutes. it is a big um, thing with him. Yeah, is overworking your your, your players. So the rotation. See, I mean, like they had don't so, help with the narrative. Yeah, the, <laughs> though the rotation they had, all the players they had out. I mean, if Julius Randle's healthy, if Bojan's healthy, those guys, Josh Hart's not gonna play forty eight minutes. Right. So he really did what he could have, you know, with what he had. Uh, you look at the 76ers series, um, it worked. Yeah. The lineups, people playing that many minutes, it worked for that. But, you know, they do get worn down and that shit ends up, you know, not working out. Uh, next series or whatever series, they reach their limit of these players playing to level. Um, but I think if they were fully healthy... Um, they would have been deeper and it wouldn't have mattered. Guys would have been more fresh and it would have been all right. But if Josh Hart's playing like he's playing, and if you see how they were playing with Brunson out of the game, nah, Brunson, we need you to play every minute. <laughs> we we it's just about playoffs and we know like players are gonna be playing high minutes and um high usage and stuff. Uh Jokic, we were just talking about him. He played forty damn near every minute in the game. Um and him not playing the fourth quarter in that last game really helped with that. But it, it really affected his play and his production. Uh, so, you know, Tom Thibbs, I'm going to give him a pass. Next year, I think they'll be back. And uh, they'll, they need one more star, I think, one more player. Uh, yeah. I think the De- DeMar Rosen out there in New York would be nice. I think that's a the guy they need. A more consistent, a productive guy, DeMar DeRozan, coming off playing every game of the season. Uh, a reliable number two. Uh, Julius Randle, I think he need to go. In the playoffs, he's cheeks. Um, so the role yeah. players they have, Hardenstein, all the they need to bring him back, but they should be back. And the, the East is kind of weak. 
Ain't no kind of. Shit, look at the playoffs this year. <laughs> Somebody had to get to the Eastern Conference Finals. <laughs> yeah, the East is kind of weak. So, I mean, you know, next year they have a really good shot. You bring in one more star. Uh, but let's switch over to the NFL. Let's talk a little about the, the Chicago Bears schedule. Let's give our record predictions. I'm going to go right. week by week. Um, let me hear your thoughts. All right. Three primetime games this year. No NFC North games until week 11. Um That's weird. Three straight NFC North games in that stretch, too. So, um, weeks one through ten are the we- the easiest weeks, you know, uh, of in the NFL. Uh, but let's go week by week, like I said. Week one, Tennessee. What do, who you got in that one? Oh, that's an easy W. Easy W? Easy Will w. Levis. I think, though, offensively, they have a lot of weapons that they could do. challenge our secondary. It's a good matchup, a good week one matchup. Um, Will Levis, I think we can make it a bad day for him uh, defensively. Get a couple of interceptions, get a couple of turnovers, um, and then defensively, the Tennessee Titans have a pretty solid group. Uh, secondary, they just got Legarius Need, so I think having that kind of defense could be a f- great first challenge for Caleb Williams to see mm-hmm. where he's at, mm-hmm. but not too much of a challenge. A team like the 49ers that's gonna that's gonna kill the confidence right. of a rookie quarterback. So, so you got the you got the Bears in this one. Easy. So. Probably a blowout, right? No, I wouldn't say a blowout after your description. I'd say, you know, it's it's the first game with a rookie quarterback. So a decent victory to get the confidence there. Yeah. Um I say we uh we don't cover but we win. Okay. Uh week two, Sunday night football against the Texans. Man. I, I would be happy with this just being competitive to be honest. I don't think CJ Stroud is gonna have an issue. No. With our defense, just because we're big zone, and he's a good quarterback that gets the ball out quick, as fuck yeah, on time, rhythm thrower. It's gonna be hard to get sacks so against him. It's gonna him. be very hard, especially if we don't sure up our pass rush, unless Dexter and Hooker and them boys is crazy. Yeah, take I could that. Be wrong. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, and that's gonna be a it's a good test game uh, to see where you're at. Yeah. Um, and Eberflus usually doesn't do well against. Um, good offensive-minded coaches like the offensive coordinator they have is pretty good, 49ers kind of guy. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be a really good challenge. I think if we can keep it competitive, I'll be happy. So we start the season off one-on-one. I think we both have us losing to the Texans. Uh, week three versus the Colts, that's going to be a good matchup. I think, think we should so? win this. The Colts are going to be good next year. They're going to be a playoff team. Anthony Richardson. I don't think they're going to be. Uh, and here's why. Go ahead. Just the... The team in their division, number one. I, I, defensively, they're going to be Anthony solid. Richardson? You've seen what year two looked like for Justin Fields after he had this breakout year running the ball. Yeah. Um, and you looked at the injuries AR had last year. I don't see him running as much. Uh-huh. Um, and I don't see him beating us as a passer. Yeah, so Shane Steichen, I think the games we saw, the little sample size, they were really competitive. Oh, the, they the games, were Anthony Richardson. Scoring, they were. Uh, I think they blew game. out the Texans. No, yeah, they blew they out the Texans, and they were they were beating the Rams. That game went down the wire, um, and really just you know, mm-hmm. really just some of those matchups, uh, some of those games. Anthony Richardson, he was looking like Cam Newton. No, he and, looks like he's got. It. He's got it. He's got he it. He just and does next up. But, just can't get hurt. Yeah, and I don't think he'll take as many hits as he did last year. Um, but the weapons, they got a Donnie Mitchell from Texas. So if they got more weapons out there. I like the Colts to be a competitive team, but this is a game we should win. We should win, but it'll be close as fuck. Mm-hmm. They're better than the Titans, though, I think. Yes. So 2-1 and one right now um, versus Rams. What do you think about this one? Ooh, I think this might be a game. loss. I think this might be a loss. It might not be. If Cooper Cup's Defensively, healthy. we got to see what, what the Rams look like. Yeah. I think they lost their best. Aaron Donald. They had a pretty good draft though. They got uh, Jared Hurst from Florida State. They got the other D tackle. Had a good time from Florida State. So they always draft pretty well. Um, You would lean more on the side of a loss or win. Oh, that's gonna be tough. Yeah, I'd say. Even Flusi doesn't do well against McVay. Like that matchup is not in our favor. I think they. But it's a home game. Um. They're from the West Coast. It's going to be a two-hour time difference. I'm going to take the Bears. Okay. So you have the Bears more. winning. So you're looking at three of them. Well, we're, we're losing one of these games. 
Colts and Rams? Yeah. I think it would be the Rams. <laughs> so, I think we'll go two and two there. Yeah, let's say two and two. Two and two. Week five versus Carolina. Oh, yeah, we're clapping. Oh, that's easy. We're clapping them. Easy. Uh, so, three and two. This next stretch, like weeks five through ten, they're must wins. Yeah. We can go seven and two off this uh, couple weeks. Yeah. Uh, Carolina, Jacksonville, and London. That's going to be tough because they, they run London, basically. Yeah. Um, but I think we should beat Jacksonville. I think they're going to take a step down again this year. You think so? That, de- that division is getting better. Division's getting better. They lost, uh, what's his name, the receiver? Yeah. Calvin. Calvin Ridley. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, I think he'll have a better year, but... Um, He's got no choice. Yeah, he does. He got no choice. Shit. If he wants to get paid. Right. Um, but i like us to handle business and beat Jacksonville. I think we're the better team. Um, then we have the bye week. So we're by week four and two. Um, we got Washington week eight. The Commanders. Easy. We should beat them. Arizona. I think Arizona will be pretty decent this year. They'll be competitive. Nah, we'll beat them. We'll beat them. Um, they had a lot of holes, especially defensively. But they they were competitive last year. Uh, Kyler Murray, Marvin Harrison. That connection is going to be nasty. Uh, but Kyler Murray, if he's healthy, we handle business against him when we played him last year. Um, so I think the Bears in that one. Um, New England, week 10. That's an easy one. At home. Easy. I think Drake May, that Patriots defense is going to be competitive. They're going to be a solid group, but I like us in that one. For sure. Um, Then things get rough. Week 11 uh, through week 14. Um, Green Bay at home. This is 7-2 at week 11. 7-2 right now. This is a a huge divisional game. Um, Green Bay at home. If we're going to beat Green Bay, I think it's at home. And if I'd we can split the L. series. You say L? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to say we win this one. Okay. So you have a 7-3. I have us 8-2. Looking at top of the division right now. Mm-hmm. Um, Detroit, um, Versus Minnesota week 12. That'd I think be, we should sweep Minnesota. Yeah, no, no, I mean, J.J. McCarthy, I think he's going to struggle. They're going to present a tough uh, situation offensively. Blitz-wise. Defensively. Yeah. Brian Flores. But if our defense can... Handle handle business. It'll be a it'll be a. a, a I think yeah, we should be able to beat uh, Minnesota. Well, if it's we can't stop JJ McCarthy, we yeah we yeah, we cap. Yeah, so I think we'll get that dub. Um, you eight and three, nine and two right now. Detroit Thanksgiving away. I'm gonna say Detroit. You say in Detroit too. So it's in in a dome in the dome prime time Thanksgiving game. Um, they usually, I I don't know. I gotta see how Caleb is looking. I think in those first couple games, he's going to build that confidence. And if he balls out, we could beat Detroit twice. Oh, easily. We could beat Detroit twice. Because we, we, we know co- the formula. We beat almost ball. beat them. We're the best team yeah. against them. Yeah. Look at the numbers. We almost beat them twice last year. So, yeah. I think we should handle business. But I got to see how Caleb's looking right now. I'll say that's a loss. I got to see what Detroit's defense looks like. They improved. They did improve. They got uh, Carlton Davis from the Bucks in the secondary. That's they a big one. got a corner from Alabama in the first round. So, secondary looks a lot better. What about the pass rush? I think that was the biggest issue. They got some dudes, too, up there, too, now. They made some good moves. Um, they got the defensive tackle from the Bengals, DJ Reader. Oh, shit. Great against the yeah. run. So that's going to be probably tough. But this is going to be a good-ass game. Yes. I think I, I have us losing this one. Coming off, you know, Green Bay and Minnesota, two tough games. Yes. Uh, Green Bay more specifically, so I think we'll lose that one. San Francisco, week 14, we're going to lose that one. Yeah. We're going to lose that one. So, I mean, right now I think you have us with, like, four losses. It'll I, be five with San Fran, right? San Fran, yeah, five with them. And then, you know, that one, I hope we're just competitive. Like the Texans game, just go out there, be competitive. Great test to see how we match up against the NFC teams, um, against a great NFC juggernaut. Um, after San Fran, Minnesota away, sweep them. We should yeah. sweep Minnesota, so I like us in that one. Uh, week 16, Detroit at home. That's when we're winning. That's when we're yeah, winning. We gotta win. At home, we're winning that one. Yes. Split the series with Min- uh, Split the series with Detroit and Green Bay, we're good. What is that, in December too? Oh, yeah. Just Jared Goff, it's going to get a little Might cold. Might be Christmas. Yeah, that's going to be a tough one for Detroit I and uh-huh. us. We're going to win that one. Um, week 17, Thursday night football, home against uh, Seattle. Oh, that's an easy W. Seattle's going to be nice. They're going to be good defensively. Offensively, they're, they're going to be booming. starting over. Yeah. Is that new offensive coordinator? We got their offensive coordinator. Hey, may, maybe Shane Walter knows the blueprint to you know beat Geno Smith and tank them. does. Oh, we definitely have that. And then Geno 
Come on, man. Yeah, it's going to be a nice dub for us. Yeah. Thursday night football. And that you got to think, if we're not winning the division, that's a team that's probably going to come be, here on a Thursday, too. Yeah. That's a team that's probably going to be wild card. going to bust hunting, their ass. Hunting, you know. We should bust their ass, low key. Um, and then week 18, Green Bay away at Lambeau. Oh man, this is the you don't got you don't got the Bears beating Green Bay at all. I I'll say you know what we'll we'll take one. Okay, we'll all right. One. So what you got? You got uh, you got. We might win the division with that. Resume. You so you basically got twelve and five then. I got twelve and five as well. We might split the division evenly, or mm-hmm. we might get swept by Green Bay. Those Either are my or. two things. Okay, so. Uh, I, I definitely for sure think we're going to have a better opportunity to split with Detroit than Green Bay. Just Green oh, Bay yeah, has that sure. has that decades of just dominating our ass. Yeah, so. coaching staff, way better than ours. Um, I think offensive coordinator Shane Waldron is going to be having this offense looking good. I um, agree. And if Caleb is the answer, he should go out and beat Jordan Love. So 12-5, and five, you have him 12-5 and five as well. That's our record prediction for that. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments about that and what your prediction for the Bears is. Uh, but let's get into NFC teams. Um, how many teams do you take above the Bears? Man, really just the Cowboys the, didn't the get 49ers? better. So. No, I, I got us over the Cowboys. You do? Especially in the playoffs, we would beat the Cowboys. I would want to see the Cowboys. Yeah, I would too. So 49ers, I think. 49ers, Eagles. Eagles got really good. They got they got better. Um, 49ers, Eagles, and I think I wouldn't take us over. I would like I wouldn't put Detroit over us. Yeah, but you kind of have to, just because they won the division yeah, last year. I would year. put Detroit and Green Bay above us. Okay, so those at this point, I I gotta see it before. What I, about the I Rams? The Rams is a tough one, but I think I I like them too. Just because I'll give the nod to them, McVay yeah, and coaching. Them the I think they dress their holes. They're defensively defensively they're going to be good. Yeah. Um, defensive tackle, uh, Kobe Turner, defensive rookie of the year last year. So Aaron Donald, they set it up to him to uh, you know smart. retire and have guys in place. So five teams. That's it. Really, and some of them are an argument. Detroit could be an argument. The Rams could be an argument. So I think just five teams above the Bears. Um, we got an opportunity to prove this shit. Opportunity. That means, at worst, wild card. Wild we got card. Detroit, Green Bay, San Fran, as well as um, the Rams. So yeah, we got. They're on our schedule. They in our way. Yeah, we Seattle. Don't got the Eagles. We don't got Dallas, but we would clap Dallas. I think. I think yeah, we would Dallas beat Dallas. Don't see us. I think we would beat Dallas. We we had a shot, you know, Justin Fields. We were we were putting up, Justin Fields had a good game against Dallas. Remember that game? He had a good start. He could start. All right. We got <laughs> clapped. We got clapped at the end, but <laughs> David Montgomery fumbled that bitch. I was like, damn. We we know. could definitely um yeah, Dak Prescott would have a tough day against our defense. Oh, for sure. Especially if it's at Soldier Field. Oh, no. We would take right. we would they take They would never chips. set up Dallas like that. Yeah. So look at their schedule. I'm sure it's some bullet bullshit. Yeah, I think it is. Um, per usual, twelve <laughs> and five, guaranteed. <laughs> I no, actually, I think Dallas is not going to make the playoffs this year. Hot take. I don't think Dallas will Have make the playoffs. Look at their schedule. Let's look at it right now. I, I, I they got the Washington twice and the Giants twice. Washington That's got better right now. Washington got better. They still have a lot. And yeah, they, they just traded all their defense. Cleveland week one. That's a L. New Orleans, that's a dub. Baltimore, week three. That's a L. Giants, that's a dub. Yeah. Uh, Pittsburgh, Detroit. L. L. San Francisco. Damn. <laughs> niggas not making it. Atlanta's the better, too. Atlanta is better. Kirk going to bust their ass, too. Philadelphia. Yeah. Houston. Oh, damn. Oh, Washington. Giants, they'll probably beat them. Oh, yeah. Cincinnati. Damn. Carolina. Tampa Bay. They should handle business. Uh, Philadelphia and Washington. I see a lot of L's on this schedule. Me too. This is the year, Dallas. This is the last year. Dak's going to be somewhere else. They, some some teams go give him the bag to play somewhere else. Um, Mike McCarthy's done. Hopefully, Jerry Jones gets assassinated. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll just play it. I'll just play it. Uh, but, yeah, that's, that's it. That's it. This is the end of first round exits for Dallas. They'll have to. I think they should start over. Michael Parsons might want out. Um, this could be a really CD bad. Lamb. This could be a really bad year pl- for him. Paid receiver of all after time after Justin Jefferson, so he's probably gonna want to get somewhere near that. Uh, Justin Jefferson's bag is probably gonna be crazy. 
So Dallas, I don't think makes the playoffs. Hot take, call it what you want. But how many AFC teams would you take over the Bears? You think? It might be it might be more than five. Let's AFC, let's look at it. I mean, obviously you got the Chiefs. Okay, Chiefs. Baltimore. Baltimore. Chiefs, Baltimore. Um Houston. I'd say Houston. Yeah, Houston. Um The Bengals. What you think about yeah, the Bengals healthy if Joe Burrow's healthy. Um that's Miami, fourth. you might be able to put up a vote. Take us over Miami. Hot take. I take us over I'd Miami. I take us over Miami too, but I don't think people would. Then yeah, that's all right. I, that could be public opinion. That could be an argument. Yeah. All right. What do you think about the Jets? Aaron Rodgers healthy? No. We you wouldn't take us ass. over. The, you no, would take. No. You take us over the Jets. Yes. What? Montez Sweat is e. Hey, I got fried chicken. I got mac yeah, and cheese. That's, that's I got yeah, be easy. catfish. That's be easy. Um. So yeah, Jets is a question mark, but Aaron Rodgers is our daddy though. Yeah, but that's when he had an O line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, we're better than the Jets. Uh, Cleveland with Deshaun Watson. Ooh. Freaky ass niggas. <laughs> Sixty nine got. <laughs> yeah, Cleveland got us. Okay, Cleveland. They got a good coach too, Stefanski. Joe Flacco. They beat us. So yeah, come on now. Pittsburgh. Nah, we'll take them. I take Pittsburgh. I take us over Pittsburgh too. Yeah. So really. Buffalo, I think they're not going to make the playoffs either. That's another hot take. You've seen what happened when Stephon Diggs' uh, performance went down. Yeah. Right. So they got Dalvin Cook. They you got still think they'll be a Kincaid, playoff team? Um, and they have they just dra- they drafted my man's. So yeah, they'll be straight. So you you take offense. Buffalo over us? No. Okay. I take Buffalo. Over. Uh, I take us over Buffalo. Yeah, I might take us because they had to they had to get everybody out of there. So right now, let's see. They still got their D tackles though. So yeah, they got the trench. We got the so. defensive coach, defensive line coach. <laughs> All right, so Kansas City, Baltimore, line. Cincinnati, Cleveland, yeah. Houston. Those are the only five teams in the AFC we're taking over the Bears. Mm-hmm. So that would put us at maybe the eleventh best team in the NFL. <laughs> right, five teams the in the NFC, ten. five teams in the AFC. Uh, let us know if you disagree with that in the comments. Some of those maybe might be, you know, different. Um, but let's finish it off with Caleb Williams. Same thing, but how many quarterbacks in the NFC are you putting over Caleb? Uh, this is tough. This is tough. So you got to start with Jalen Hurts. You Do you Jalen Hurts Dak. after the year he had? You think? Yeah, Dak. No, I'm taking Caleb over Dak. Out the gate? Out the gate. I don't want to get to see none. Oh. Caleb over Dak. Okay, well, who you not putting him over is... Jared Brock, Goff. Jared Goff. Brock Purdy, because he Purdy. took a seat to the Super Bowl. Over. You're not putting him over Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford. you definitely Jordan not putting Love. him over Jordan Love. Not yet. But I think that's it. After those four quarterbacks, because you look at... Uh, all right, Jalen Hurts. Kirk he, Cousins, you're not putting him over him. Oh, I'm putting him over Kirk. Kirk and, Kirk and Dak. Kirk and Dak. Kirk and Dak. I give you Dak, but I ain't giving you Kirk. So Jared, I'm not even giving you Dak because he led the league in passing the last year. So right? you have him as the seventh best quarterback then, because you said Dak, you said Brock Purdy, Jared Goff, Matthew Stafford, um, Jordan Love. You gotta earn that shit, bro. Hot take. Andrew Caleb Andrew. Williams will throw for over 4,400 yards. Okay. Okay. I mean, because you think Keenan Allen, DJ Moore are going to be two 1,000 yard receivers. Cole Komet's probably going to give you 700. Um, and then Odunze is going to give you 800 at least. And out the backfield, you probably get another five, six. Gerald Everett's going to be like 400. So, yeah, Tyler Scott will give you about a, a buck 50. <laughs> Jet sweep. Make, make sure you pitch the Jet sweep instead of handing it off. That's what you have to do. That's a pass. <laughs> but, yeah, so I, I agree with the hot take. Caleb Williams going to do his thing. Uh, hot take for me. Mm. Ah, let me think. Uh, Anthony Richardson, Dark Horse MVP candidate. I think the the Colts well, that with the, better be one of your L's. We oh yeah we're gonna beat the Colts. Um, <laughs> but he go but he go win the MVP. Yeah, he, dark horse. Not saying he's gonna win, but dark horse candidate to keep an eye out on. Okay. I think the weapons he has around him, the sample size we saw in those couple games, the rushing ability he had a couple two touchdown performances. This is a guy yeah. I'm gonna take in fantasy football. Just the arm strength, throwing the ball up at the ceiling. Uh, but with Shane Steichen. The same offensive coordinator, 
He's his head coach with the Colts, but the offensive coordinator with the Eagles the year they went to the Super Bowl, he had a great offense around Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts' best year. I think 17 games of Anthony Richardson, he's going to put up numbers. Michael Pittman, um, you know, Donnie Mitchell, um, Downs. Um, they have a lot of weapons, the tight ends, the freakish tight ends they have. Offense line is there. The Colts will be a wild card playoff team in the AFC, I think, too, as well. But Anthony Richardson, this is a candidate to keep an eye out on. Cam Newton, but faster, stronger arm. Look at look out for him to be in those MVP talks in this next season. Okay. Oh, I'll be watching. Yes, sir. <laughs> Don't take him in fantasy, though. Will be. Oh, nah, I need to. <laughs> uh, but that's all we got for the show today, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. Make sure to like and subscribe on both of our channels, Six Man Blitz, Shytown town Blitz. We're going to keep posting content on both and keep you updated. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. As always, peace. Some people thought the NFC North was going to be the worst division in football this season. They thought it was going to be as bad as the NFC South.